Hello there everyone, and welcome back to Napoleon Total War 3 with this Prussian campaign, and it's time to take care of the Spanish. Given though that it's so... there's so many of them, we're most likely gonna split this into two videos, where in which the first one will be us seizing Strasbourg, and then the second one will be dealing with this... Um, mess over here. Um, but before we go ahead and do that, let's just take a look because I've done a few turns. Not a lot has happened, but a few things. So the Navy has moved um, to port and has been repaired and is now on its way back. So this is my battle navy followed by this smaller navy, which is also, um, which I've stationed back here because they're going to get one extra ship. So there was um, a question whether or not if I would change this to a steam dockyard if that would change anything. But if you see here if I click on the steam dockyard it only allows me to get the merchant ship. If I do for the trade one it allows more. Um, so I guess I mean I could change it. It would take 12 turns but we don't, I mean, seemingly, the only thing that happens is the people will dis, uh, they dislike this port as well, but it will just reduce the amount of, uh, of, um, trade routes, is basically, and I can't recruit any ships anymore for some reason. Um, so it's one of the quirks of the campaign. Anyways, there we got the ship, I mean, I did capture two Spanish ships. This 80-gun one, um, San Leonardo, and I think we had another one somewhere around here. So I guess the thing was here that says that I could have one out of four. I think that might be due to the Spanish have that limit, or I don't know. Um, we also supposed to have, there the Spanish frigate as well, 38-gun frigate. Very nice. Um, and then what else? Yes. Oh yes. Uh, in Berlin, uh, we have completed the Humboldt University, which allows me Freewillige Jäger Company, which I don't think is probably not that good. Um, then we got two lances, two different kinds of lances. The eighth, n the number eight Ulan um, is uh, I, I can only have one. The other ones I can have three. I'm not entirely sure. If I'll be able to incorporate them into any army, but given how I throw away my cavalry all the time, we might just recruit them to send them um, to help out at the front. Um, the army that was over here is on its way back. Maybe I can place the number 8 Lancer in this army. That could be a plan. And they're also going to get another 12 pounder. So they're on their way back or not really. They're going to stop around here. Because with my other armies, the plan is kind of to sweep in across here towards France. And that will leave kind of the Italian area. And I don't think the um, Austrians will be able to handle that. So they'll probably not move very much over there. So this general will Wungnes now will be moving through here and dealing with the French. The thing though, I will probably have already won the campaign because I need to capture only this region and then this region, I believe. Those are the two regions that I need to capture. But yeah, uh, I don't think there's anything else. I mean, the alliance with Britain keeps breaking, but they're not doing anything about it. They're not pushing to attack. Um, still have kind of the concern here that either, you know, that the, the Greeks and the Turks decide to go to war with each other, which would be strange. I've had that happen before. Or that Russia decides that they want to attack or Austria wants to attack. So there's always that with vassals, but it seemed to have been working pretty well so far in this campaign that my allies do not want to devour my vassals and not realizing, not caring the fact that they will be declaring war on me if I go ahead and uh, or if they go ahead and attack them and also that if 
I break it, it will, I mean, everyone will dislike me for not protecting my vassals. Anyways, we're going to deal with this army right here to start off. So, Blue Shirt will advance to start off with. And then we're going to brace the bridge by having the um, Saxon army move first. So now we're within range. So now everyone, maybe I can out-resolve this one. But that usually goes to absolute shit. Okay, so I can't really move any further than... We'll, uh... That means that I'm gonna have to, I guess, end... These two have the distance. I should have let this guy attack. Because then the other two would have still continued. Because if we end turn and they get to choose the battleground or who they attack, that's not going to be that great. Mostly because I'm afraid they're not going to bring everyone. And I really want a big battle. But there we have it, I guess. No, what I can do is we can still have this one come in first, I guess. It's just that the cannons will not roll in to begin with. But I think, I, oh, I think we can take these guys on. If I just go balls to the walls with this army, I don't think we need those cannons. So without further ado... Oh, I can even force their surrender if I want to, but that would only place another 3,000 men under the command of the great army over there. So that, that's not going to happen. And Outer Resolve is probably going to kill a lot more me of my men. So, I think, without further ado, as I always say, let's go ahead and smash the Spanish. Here's my deployment. So, heavy cavalry on the flanks, the guards on the flanks, light infantry in the center. Here's the general. Boom. Let's go ahead and do this. So, the enemy has kind of made their position like that, as you can see, to the side of the town. And uh, from our current position, we'll be hitting them in the flank. These cavalry units will hold back, as I do not intend to have them ride straight into the enemy's front line. Also, uh, let's see, oh shit! Where are you coming? You coming right behind the enemy army. I want you to retreat immediately. Both of you. So re <laughs> one reinforcement units are coming up right behind. That's not good. That's not good at all. Oh shit. The Saxon army is going to turn up right behind the enemy. Uh, well, I have no time to waste because uh, either I keep retreating those troops or I use them to my advantage. And if I intend to use them to my advantage, I need to close up with the front line. So the Chevaliers actually got a pretty good shot at taking out the Spanish artillery. Which I imagine the Spanish think is one of their advantages for this battle. So the Chevaliers come out of nowhere and charge in. Right onto the Spanish cannons. And the Spanish 12 pounder is broken. However, you will you will retreat. Oh, there's the general riding about like a moron. Uh, right, back to these guys, which are closing in. Uh, the Saxons are breaking the general staff as well. Let's keep them there then. Right, keep up. We need to keep gaining ground on the enemy here.
As they're going for the Saxons, they're still holding on. They haven't lost that many men. Um, they've cut down quite a few Spanish troops. They are kind of getting surrounded now. So I'm going to have a hard time trying to break out with that troop. I don't know why why all the cavalry units here are running all the all, if they if it ends up that they get like broken or destroyed or whatever, that's gonna piss me off to no end. Right, there's no way they're gonna be able to break through. They managed to hit this unit, but only in the most Light the sense of okay, the chevaliers were broken from the position there. I mean, they took out the cannon and they took out a lot of enemies, and it looks like the unit's going to survive as well. So it's not it's not the end of the world. Jaegers to the front. I want the guards. Okay, so the enemy is redrawing their line towards the in towards the town. Let's see. Let's get all the heavy cavalry over maybe to this side. It's just the uh, Casadors. I don't think it's a light cavalry unit. Once the square starts firing, they should be able to break them. I don't think uh, we're going to have a problem there. It's a lot of uh, provincial militia crap in this army. Guard infantry will gain some more ground. Jaegers further forward. Light infantry to the front. You will drop the square and move into the line. Heavy cavalry onto the flank. We've got cavalry charge coming in. But they're not intending to actually um, run here. They're running back onto the front line. Right, heavy cavalry, move forward, and then you will sweep in and break the enemy's center. Why aren't you. Uh, giving like full-fledged fire onto enemy units straight ahead. They do have... Uh, what's this? There's a regiment. There's another one. Was that... Uh, I mean... Oh, they have put troops back on the cannons. Elite cavalry, I mean elite infantry up there. You know what? You can drop being information. The enemy really likes to move into square, don't they? They're all about that square. Hit that militia. Obviously they're very worried about the um, heavy cavalry but they're forming square right in front of um, muskets being pointed at them all heavy infantry forward get onto those guns sounds like canister But they're not really in a good angle, are they, the Spanish? And the heavy Prussian cavalry just rides into this mess of provincials. Do have a grenadier unit running about in here. And a little bit of others. But really isn't helping them. 
gain some ground as the enemy is being forced back. And looking at the position we are holding and the enemy are holding, they're really falling apart at this point. Just because the heavy cavalry is just sweeping everyone away. Seems like the guards though are holding on. I'll have the cavalry right away and we'll shoot down the remaining Spaniards with the muskets. So we'll ride away to clear clear the area. But it looks like just me pushing away um, caused enough mayhem in among the Spanish to break them. Though uh, the heavy cavalry, two of the units have been broken and are retreating as of now into our musket fire. We'll hold fire and let these two units ride them down. The general has arrived, he can most likely get these guys back on track. And very quickly we seem to have massacred the Spanish army. The cavalry is too strong out and uh, we've pu uh, maybe pushed them a little bit too far so we'll have them retire. You will go ahead and rally. Yes, they're back. Let's uh, draw a new line along this wall. And then come again at the enemy as they're rallying two smaller regiments. Light infantry will move up, cover this wall. The elites will follow. And then the heavy cavalry units will be stationed over here. Kind of a messy battle, but it w I mean, we just ran over them so quickly. They didn't really stand a chance. And we're probably gonna see something similar when we meet the big one. It's the um, the Grenadiers Agrupados that were, I was about to say the last ones to stand, but it seems to be uh, the 40th, 40th regiment of foot. That was the last ones. All these regiments, since they were in town, will be uh, utterly destroyed. I mean, I don't think I lost that many, but uh, it kind of felt a little bit messy there at certain points. Um, I kind of noticed how I forgot here, forgot to move the cavalry into charge. Um, but, I mean, compared to all the Spanish bodies lying around, I think the few mistakes I made doesn't really matter that much. And this army wouldn't really be taking part in the main fight anyways. We'll see what I decide, if I decide to end turn or if I decide to march on and uh, destroy them. But I think that we'll keep this for this video because the other one is probably going to be a long battle just due to the fact that they have like three or four full stacks. And even if I play it really hard and tough like this one and just trying to sweep through it all, um, it's still going to take quite a long time for that battle. Anyways, let's head back to the campaign map and uh, capture Strasbourg and also I'm kind of curious to see if because of the whatever happened with my generals over there when I told them to escape or at least that guy over there if that broke down Blucher and killed him or something I don't know what happened really.
Right, <laughs> I was a bit concerned at first because I noticed there's two uh, open slots. Like, oh, did I lo lose two units? No, those are of course the cannons that I didn't bring in. So we have an army of 9,200 men, where which we lost 400 compared to the enemy army, which lost uh, 2,800, uh, where which most of them were killed by us, seemingly. Uh, highest losses, Saxon Chevaliers lost a lot, only remaining 28, however, kills, Karazier Regiment and yeah, the, and then Guard Fusilier has got a lot, but I'm interested to see, peacefully occupy, yeah, it seems as though, Lusher and the fellas held out fine. Right, then it's to... Oh, look at that. That's... That's nasty. So the idea would either be... To hold out and hope that the Spanish... Move in to strike us. Which I don't think is very likely. The target for us, if we're attacking... It's definitely one of the two armies down here. I think this one is probably because we'll get as much. But I think as soon as I move within their area of influence, they're going to strike. So if I start by moving Glusher there, and I move the Saxon army over there. What troops? I can actually move this one to be part of the battle as well. And then we can move them back to... Uh, to garrison the town. However, that, my friends, is going to be next episode. So you can see there's massive force. So we got about 9,000. Well, lo well, I lost 400, so it's 8,800 8, Prussians versus. We don't really know how many. But I'd imagine something similar on the Spanish side. I, they got two full stacks. And then they got like a third one, kind of ish. I think we might actually unnumber them slightly. Because they have a lot of cavalry and a lot of cannons. And also I noticed this one isn't at full strength, all of its units seemingly. For some reason. Right. So I'll end it there and hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.